Well, what are we up to today? Well, this hopefully is going to be a little short video. I'm heading off to South Gippsland Tank Adventures yet again. They're doing their Australia Day event. So I'm going to have a couple of days on the road. I'm going to go play with some tanks. Um, and we've bought some new gear. I've actually finally upgraded from the Beofeng handheld. In fact, I've got several of them. I wanted something with decent audio quality. So um, until we get the uh, base station unit mounted in the ambulance, we're using this guy. But uh, what are we actually doing in the video? Well, I'm going to take one of these guys. Uh, but because the ambulance doesn't have a lighter socket in the rear module, it has a merit plug or a merit socket connected to the 24 to 12 volt converter that used to run the suction pump. So I'm going to take this and put this on it. It's a relatively simple process. Um, we do, I have already done that with a four way lighter socket adapter that's already in there, and things are getting a bit messy with all the adapters. So, but this might solve some of our issues. So, these things, if you want to buy one of these from JCAR, it is a PP2120. Um, very handy. And one of these guys is a PP2090, if you're looking to order the parts. Um, so, I think my local JCAR dealer is quite happy with me. I've hopefully sent him a lot of business. Um, and we'll see if maybe we can send him a bit more. Because people ask me about this sort of stuff all the time and so I've actually taken to using my own videos to explain to people what I mean about things. This has actually got some quality cable on it, or at least it feels very thick. I wonder if it's going to be like 9 tenths plastic. Oh, and it's got sticky pads on here already. So that saves me having to put mounting tape on there, although I will be putting an extra strip because um, I've got some super strong stuff and I know what I'm like, things come off a lot. Um, this has got, oh, it's got a, an on-off button in there. Look, the 90 degree thing would be nice, but it's not a merit plug, so that really isn't going to help us. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's got a fuse in here too. Might as well explore this while we're at it. Yes, uh, no, that's just a pin. So I'm going to be curious to find out where the fuse actually is. Anyway, we're not going to get that far, because... I'm going to get my universal repair tool. Right, now, that thing won't break down again. Not that it has, but it can't, because it's not going to get a chance. Let's have a look at the cross section of this cable. As I expected, it actually looks like cheap two-core flex. There's brown and blue in there, and it's a majority of that is actually plastic, so it's probably not as heavy current as I would expect, but we're not going to be running a large load on this. And probably indicative of this is when this cable wants to bend like this. You can, it's a very, very stiff cable. In fact, it's got enough retention to spring back up like that. So that says cheap cable straight off the bat, but um, you know, we didn't expect much more for the money. Um, it is kind of power tech stuff. Some of the power tech stuff's good, some of it's cheap. Um, so yeah, anyway, you know what? This lead is actually so annoying. I think I'm going to wire my own cable to this. Yep, I think before I even bother trying to fit this on here, I'm going to fold my knife blade away so I don't cut my finger off. I'm going to crack this guy open and run my own lead because this is just, this is not going to do, not going to cut the mustard for me. Um, I've got something, I've got some OFC cable that's probably got probably better current handling and probably better behaved. So let's find my spudger tool and see if we can get this thing open. Now, I will apologise for the sound in the background. Um, spring has sprung and summer is, has hit. Uh, and it's very hot, so I've got the air conditioner running. And if you're wondering about all this stuff on my arm, that's one of the side effects of having tight degrees, your immune system's a little uh, suppressed. So let's see if we can get this guy open. Um, definitely a two-part clamshell on here. I wonder if there's any screws holding this together. There probably is. It doesn't seem to be on the top, but you know what? I've got mounting tape by the roll, so let's see if there's any screw. Yes, screws under here. Yes, there are. Okay. Good. We're not going to be able to use that stuff. It doesn't feel like the stickiest of mounting tape anyway. Um, especially when I'm going to be swinging some weight off it. So let's peel all that up. There's actually four screws under here. So, 
to get my screwdriver and get those screws out. So the screws are considerably smaller than I had expected and the, so is the um, sh or the shaft or the depression or the recess. I'm struggling to find the right language to describe the hole that the screws are in. Um, they are actually quite a bit smaller than I had expected so I've had to use the jeweler's drivers. Now um, I have a little gadget I 3D printed years ago that I made for myself that holds all my spare bits. It has magnets on the bottom. That's important and I'll show you why in just a moment once I manhandle this. I can run along the top of these screw holes and pull the screws out this way. There's still a screw in one of them somewhere. Let's find out. No, no, yes. One I thought it was in. We'll get it out eventually. All right, one moment. Alright, so we have this thing open, and I think it's scary seeing blue and brown wire inside something like this because that to me means to call flex and mains voltage. That's bloody scary. Um, so yeah, anyway, it looks like it's a, an all-in-one USB control unit uh, or regulator, switch mode unit. Got a decent capacitor and a couple of filters on here. So, or inductors, they're labeled L, so... Alright, I'm probably going to have to... Oh, it's got a little thermo thermal cutoff in here. Um, or thermistor. So that's probably a polyfuse. Anyway, that's nice. Um, in case somebody actually plugs a cigarette lighter into it. Anyway, I want to pop this little end thingy out. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I'm going to pull the bottom section off as well. That all comes off in one unit. Give me a moment to do an exploratory probe and dismantle and then we'll put some new wiring on this. Right, a little bit of careful probing and prying later and um, I discovered some interesting shortcuts. Now, the, um, the ground wire here runs along this trace. I'm guessing that's being used as a shunt. Um, but that really only just tells how much current's going out here. Um, I'm probably going to bypass that entirely. Um, because I think that is going to be a weak point. Um, and yeah, the solder connection on here is not the greatest, so we'll fix that up. Um, but yeah, and our hot wire goes into here. So, ah, okay, so that's our polyfuse to our hot wire. I get it. Makes total sense. All right. Um, in that case, I'll probably run a bit more solder along there just to bulk that up. Although if it is being used as a shunt, that's probably a bad idea. Um... But I don't see any wiring coming off either side, so I think the shunt idea just, no, they just used a piece of track. Um, there is a little capacitor across it though. Anyway, um, I'm going to pull these two wires off, I'm going to mark them, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And that's, well, clearly the blue wire is negative because that's where that is. So I don't think I really need to mark positive and negative. Let's get the iron warmed up. Okay, so now the... Um Iron is warming up, so let's invalidate our warranty properly, as if it wasn't already invalid before. Um, the strain relief, I don't think I'm going to be able to recycle that, but I'd like to be able to at least get it out. Um, yeah, alright, no, we're not going to recycle our strain relief. Keep in mind, if I'm a little bit off frame, guys, I'm sorry. Um, it can be a little hard to do this stuff using a viewfinder, whilst I'm mangling the hell out of something. I think we're going to end up with a heat shrink and hot glue um, strain relief in this one. So just slice the end off, push the rear out internally. Alright, now we get rid of this horrible cable. I'm not even going to reuse that. My apprentice is going crooked Roblox again. You can hear her screaming in the background. I'll check that out in just a moment. Um, now, we are going to use some OFC cable. This stuff has got bigger conductors than that big thick stuff than you saw before. And it's much better behaved. I'm going to thread a bit of this through. Oh, and I bumped my camera. I might just tie a knot in here and sit it in that groove. Or I'll find a way to strain relief somehow. Anyway, I better find out. Just double check what my apprentice is screaming at in the background there. Alright, so yeah, she wasn't getting the deal she wanted in Roblox. You know what, actually the way I've got this cable, I can thread that through after the fact. Alright, let's get started with this. And that's... 
behind it. Not the greatest solder job, but it could be worse, I guess. Um, now, we need a hunk of blue tack here. I need a bigger, bigger hunk, actually, but that's in the ambulance at the moment. Um, we want a bit of solder here to wet our tip to help with the conductivity, and it's probably that these are made with lead-free, too. So, a little bit of flux core leaded solder. My good weller has started to have problems. Magnetic tips not always making contact the way it should. I've just given it a tap so that it should warm up. So the magnetic tip should make contact. We'll give that a couple more minutes and we'll be back. Alright, so um, we need to add another bit of noise here. We're going to turn our outlet fan on and drag some of these fumes out. Well, the air conditioner does tend to screw with that a little bit. So we want to get that wire out. Ah, oh, okay guys, um, solder is hot, especially when molten. Alright, um, that was a poor choice. I may actually need to go and do that. I got a little distracted while watching through the viewfinder and I grabbed the wrong thing. Alright, there's our wires out. Um, one moment while I go and cool off that burn. Alright, so, we want to hook some wire up here. So I'm going to tin these couple of bits of wire here. And um, I'm using flux core solder as always, 6040 tin lead. Just love the stuff. Not so much what the lead has done to me, and I do actually, I've had my lead levels checked in case you're wondering. Um, and it is a little higher than average. It's actually in the moderate level for somebody who works with lead or a lead worker. All right, so let's have a look here. I like to use the trace wire. Now I used to call this the stripe wire just offhand. Um, and my previous employer and a comms company used to get the shits with me because I called it a stripe wire. So it is officially a trace wire in his honour. Right, so I like to use the trace wire as positive. So clearly as the shroud of this bit is negative, um, and that's what the blue wire is connected to, that's where we're going to connect our non-trace wire. Um, and I'm going to actually go parallel on this track here rather than through the hole. So we get a little bit more purchase on there. So we'll do that guy and lay you down along here. Now I am going to do something a smidgen dodgy here rather than try and go through that hole again I am actually going to touch right on it. Now I've got a little bit of limited space here so I'm sorry if I keep bumping the camera. We're going to trim this a little shorter than most people would be comfortable and we're going to go into this guy, yeah. All right. So we're going to go in like that. We might actually whack a bit more solder in here just to help give that a better bond. Now I'm hoping that the solder going through the hole should create an anchor, just because that hole is not big enough to fit these conductors through. Now, we can see here there is actually already plus and minus, or positive and negative, marked on the board. And a trace wire is into the one marked positive. So, pretty confident we're good there. Um, look, I could redo that solder join, but you know what, I'm just not going to mess with that. So, uh, yeah, that's our positive wire, which is going through some kind of filter or switching circuit. You know, I'm just not going to mess with it. If it was me, I would have gone straight into here and then piggyback this bit off that. But they're doing something fancy, so you know what? Let's just we, we paid a premium price for it, so let's just let it do what it was intended to do. So let's reassemble all of this and we'll work out where our knot needs to be. I don't think I'm going to tie a knot. I think I have a better idea for that, um, and that is going to straddle that bit there. These guys have a little slot in which they need to go into. Um, and these guys have got to go in the end way first. So I'll just let everything free float while we manoeuvre this into position. Ah, okay, so you know what? Lighter socket bit, you come out last. Do you first. This is the trick to disassembling things sometimes. It's pretty easy to disassemble things, especially in an unscheduled fashion. The skill often comes into getting everything back together again. So, um, yeah, 
that's a bit I may have to actually take this bottom layer off there are little clips to hold that in I may need to actually remove it the way it was intended rather than a shortcut and I busted one of them I think they've actually put a sticker on under there so that makes life difficult give me a couple minutes off camera and I'll do this properly Right, we got it back in. Now, for the uninitiated, removing both of the clamshells doesn't really help all that much um, because that frame actually has a bottom on it. There wasn't any stickers under there, it was just clipped in the four little clips. Um, not the end of the world. This is all pretty well friction fit. I have reinstated the little screw here. Uh, I'm going to put the bottom half of the clamshell on, um, which goes on that way. And I'm going to see where these screw standoffs come through. I'm going to run the wires around this one. Then I'm going to put a dob of hot glue in here to use that post as a strain relief. Um, there, go, there goes our little clips to clip it in position. So that's good. So a little bit of hot glue. We're going to screw it up and then we'll put the merit plug on. Okay, so this is my hot glue gun. I've had many PTC hot glue guns, uh, but this one is mine. Uh, the PTC ones blow up a lot and uh, whenever I've burnt myself it's been using a hot glue gun. So by using this method I've only got glue as hot as, I, or as hot as long as I need it rather than being constantly heated and dripping all over my work area. And we don't need much. So I have rarely actually ever burnt myself using this method. Um, partly because once I've done this all the glue that is hot is usually left on the part and this bit is relatively cooler. Um, it's a lot harder to burn myself that way. It seems counterintuitive, but I've always burnt myself using PTC hot glue guns. So, let's reassemble this and put some screws back in it. This is the point where we screw it all up. Literally. Right, we will be back after I've done three more of these. Right, we, sc we screwed up three more times. Now we look at the boring bit, which is the other end of the cable and the merit plug. So, a tip again to the uninitiated, if you're ever doing a plug, take the plug out and put the shroud on before you do anything, because that's the bit you're going to forget. Nothing like doing it with a three phase swing stage lead that's 100 meters long, and then you have to thread it, you have to undo what you've just done, or you've got to thread the shroud over 100 meters of cable. So, let's have a look. Here's our trace, which is our hot wire. So, we're going to hook our hot wire in first. Now, I could use this little screwdriver here, but I have a favourite one that was given to me by Schneider Electric when I was doing some work for an electrical contractor. Um, now, that was the Schneider rep. Right, so we'll put that one in first. Now we're going to trim this one to our length. Let's turn around sideways so you can see what I'm doing. So, positive wire has gone in the middle here. This is the negative one. We're going to trim that to just a little bit longer than that. And then we're going to give a squeeze at 90 degrees offset and maybe about 270. Pull a bit of that off and we're going to tin the end for the extraction fan running. One day we'll find out what's stuck in that fan and fix it. Today I can't be stuffed. Now if you're doing mains electrics you wouldn't want to tin the cables, you'd want to leave them just bare copper. Um, but I have found in practice with these connectors it's a lot easier to uh, tin the wire and it tends to be more reliable. Especially when salt air is involved. Let's just get this in my fingers here. All right. Now I'll do a polarity check before I do much else. We pull our lead back in here. There's no strain relief in these leads, but as you might gather, they're pretty easy to put back on in the field. Let's get our multimeter. I need to find my good field multimeter. It's gone MIA. I can turn our extraction fan off. Let's see if we can hear the piddly little beep. We can. Let's touch our ground. We have ground. Let's go to our positive in the background and there's no shorts between them. 
Oh, there is a little bit while that PTC charges up. Or whatever it is in the middle. So there is a bit of, there's a capacitor in there that's charging up. But otherwise, it's wired correctly. So we can go and plug this in and put it in service. Alright, so this is the main power supply area of the ambulance, the six wheel drive ambulance um, that we've set up. We've got our power management system there. There's a video just on installing that too if you're interested. But this is what I'm trying to clean up here. We've got a lot of stuff happening. So we need to rip some stuff out. We're going to rip this guy out and replace it. And we're going to try and replace one of these two banana connectors here as well. So uh, what I might do is camera angles get kind of tricky here. So I'm going to do most of this off camera and we'll skip to it being largely complete. And I'm going to put some of this transparent mounting tape on. This stuff's good for 30 kilograms to the square centimeter. It's also what's holding that clock on. So it should work pretty well. Also, if it tells you it's 8 degrees C, um, don't trust it. <laughs> the, um, they gave us a capacitor instead of a thermistor for that circuit. So the temperature side doesn't work properly. Anyway, let's uh, get on with it. All right, again, it's probably a little noisy because things are hot in here. Now, this little clock here has a backup battery. So I've connected that into the mains regulator um, in this power board, which is only on when the inverter's on. So when the inverter's off, we're probably not camped for a long time. We probably don't care what the time is. That's okay. This can be turned off separately. We have this stuck down so that we can still put things in and out. Um, we have to pull them up a bit, but this will tend to stop them rattling loose in transit. This is the 2.5 amp one. This will go to my kid's tablet. Um, the upper one, that will go to my phone. This is a fast charge one for my wife Samsung. And the one amp one can charge our low current stuff, like our radio and the Bluetooth speaker. Um, there is one socket here, spare for use. These cables go all the way up, temporarily up to the projector. I still haven't fixed this bit of tape. We'll do that one day. Hopefully that does it. Um, there's a Raspberry Pi in here, so I'm using that two prong or the the banana plug connector here uh, for 12 volts rather than a lighter plug. And we can plug. I've got a separate lighter socket adapter that's a high current one to run the Raspberry Pi. So when we have projector running that's what we'll be using. And this is stuck down in that position with some of that mounting tape so it doesn't float around. Alright, that looks a little neater, especially when you pull this lead off. That looks like a much more usable space. There's room for my apprentice's tablet to sit up there and charge with a bit of cooling through that plate. So, I think we're done. I hope it's been fun. I hope it's been a quick little video. We'll see you all in the next ones. Have fun, guys. See you later.